Congressman Alan Grayson, former U.S. Congressman from the 8th District of Florida, running to regain his seat. His website, congressmanwithguts.com. Uh, back, back on our program, on the air with us, live from the DNC. Congressman, welcome back. Thanks, Tom. It's good to be here. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here. So uh, what's going on there from your point of view? Well, I think from Alan West's point of view, this place is jam-packed full of socialists and communists. <laughs> I, yes, and, and Alan West, ironically, was just put on charge of, uh, of uh, Mitt Romney's uh, minority outreach or something to that effect. Uh, you know, it's, well, at least they got one black vote coming yeah, for them. I, it, that might be the only black vote. It, 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 is, it is really sad and tragic. So, uh, you're, uh, But beyond the, the funny talking point, you know, to be serious, uh, it, uh, what, my sense of last night was that it was not only one of the best opening nights I've ever seen in a convention, one of the best nights I've ever seen in a convention, period, and that this convention has the, the real possibility of turning a lot of people uh, into enthusiastic Democrats and, and, and winning this election yes. if enough people watch it and pay attention to it. What do you think? Well, it's such a dramatic contrast to what they saw last week. The, you know, three, four days of trite nonsense from the Republicans yammering about liberty and freedom, the liberty not to see a doctor when you're sick and the freedom to sleep under a bridge. Uh, and here you have Democrats talking about real solutions to the real problems in people's lives, whether it's seeing a doctor, getting a job, keeping your home, educating your children. Here we're talking about real things. They were talking about nonsense. Yeah. And, and the real things include those, that list that you just went through and others? Yes, uh, the, the Democratic Party is, is the party that actually is grappling with reality. Uh, the, the Republicans are trying to cast the spell. They want people to believe that if we just do nothing about anything, then everything will be fine. And right. when you have a pro problem, their answer is always the same, uh, prayer. They want, they'll, they'll pray for you, but they won't help you. The right. Democratic Party gives people a helping hand when they need it. The Republicans will pray for you. Yeah, and that's and that's been the case for the better part of uh, well since the 1870s, when the what what was once a reform party, the Republican Party under Abraham Lincoln, was captured by the railroad barons. Um, well, and, right, and uh, Teddy Roosevelt tried to change that. Right, uh, he tried to change it, but in the end, he couldn't do it. No, uh, he gave up and started a third party because he was so disgusted with the Republican Party that he yeah, came to Moose know party. too well. Yep. So, so how is it that most Americans haven't figured this out? Well, I, I think that what's holding them back is this tribalism that the Republicans have tried to induce. Uh, they've tried to round up uh, all of the angry white people that they could find and put them together in one political party. Uh, the Democratic Party has always been the party for everybody. Uh, the Republicans are trying to win uh, by inducing this sense of embattlement uh, among uh, angry whites. And I think that, that that's held people back. I, I, I often hear people ask the question, why do people vote against their self-interest? They're almost always referring to white voters who vote Republican. And right. the reason for that is that the, the uh, Republican Party is willing to make overt racist appeals uh, to keep their white uh, non-coalition together. Yeah, and it's, uh, you're right. It's a, it is a form of tribalism, and it is, it is, uh, it, it's tragic. It's really tragic in this country, you know, it's, uh, given our history and, and given our ideals. Um, how goes your race? You're, you're, uh, uh, I'm uh, cautiously you're optimistic. Of, uh -huh. <laughs> no, I mean, what happened was, uh, it's kind of interesting, actually. Uh, the, the Republicans threw in the towel in Orlando. What they had done in, 10 years ago after the last census is they divided Orlando into six pie slices in order to dilute the Democratic downtown vote. And we managed to pick off one of those pie slices in 2008 Another Democrat, Suzanne Cousins, picked off another pie slice in 2008. And the result of that was that they knew that they were on very shaky ground with all the pie slices. So instead, what they did after the last census, because the Republicans control the state legislature, uh, the, the, the state house, and so on, what they did after the last census is that they threw in the towel and created a Democratic district in Orlando for the first time ever. And I was unopposed running for that district for the Democratic nomination. Now we've got a classic uh, Democrat versus Tea Party race coming up in November uh, with the numbers on our side. The question, of course, is what's the outside spending going to be like? Last time they hit me, the super PACs on the right hit me with more outside spending. Vicious, awful, negative ads, uh, you know, carpet bombing the district. 
with five and a half million dollars of negative ads against me to try to keep me out of Congress last time. We'll see if they do the same thing again. They literally ran more ads against me in my district, five and a half million dollars worth, than any member of Congress anywhere in the country ever. I was their little lab rat last time to see what they could get away with with Citizens United. We'll see if it happens again. That's remarkable. And I'm guessing that it probably will happen. Do you have any sense yet whether the Koch brothers and the uh, Chamber of Commerce and the other big donors, uh, the multinational corporations and whatnot, whether, you know, whether they've thrown money into, into your district or are you just going to have to wait and find out? Last time was $2 million from the Koch brothers. Uh, it was $2 million wow. from the health insurance companies because of my support for universal health care. Wow. It was $1 million from the National Republican Party who said I was their number one target for 2010. Little old me, a first-term Democrat from a red district, wow. I was their number one target. And half a million dollars from the Chamber of Commerce. So far, the Chamber of Commerce has spent another half a million. And another different super PAC has, has put down a million dollars in reserve uh, for October. And that's all we've seen so far. I don't think a million dollars is going to beat me, though. I think it's going to take more than that. Yeah. So do you answer their attacks or do you, I mean, what's your, well, how do you, how do you deal with this kind of thing? Well, you know, we have to figure that out. I, obviously, we didn't answer them well enough last time. I lost. But I lost in a district that had been Republican for 34 years before I beat them in 2008, running a progressive campaign and, okay. and serving in Congress as a progressive. I, I don't know exactly what the right formula is, but in the same way that they test and test and test their messages, we have to test and test and test our response. What's working for us, I think, is the truth. That's what benefits us because they can't fight that. Yeah, that, that generally is the thing that wins. And, and the, the, the challenge is making sure that people know which is the truth. You know, it's whose truth is, is actually true. Right. Congressman Alan Grayson running for this, uh, to regain his seat in the 8th District of Florida. And uh, congressmanwithguts.com, the website. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, too, Tom.